Murphy one, Whims in Watercolor 2, Loose and Fearless, here we go. And this is something that I normally don't get to do is film outside. But I have to say in upstate New York, it's absolutely beautiful. There's no humidity, the sun is shining, the birds are singing. And I hope to be painting just a little bit for you during this course right here out on my patio. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to set up the book. And I just thought I would do this quick video just to make sure you get the book right because I've got a, a little twist to it in Whims 2. Listen to those birds, doesn't that sound wonderful? I never get to do this. So let me take you through, first of all, one of the second things that I've become obsessed with is a little label maker. <laughs> I've been labeling stuff and I just thought I would put a title on the outside of my Stillman and Burn beta series, the blue book. I'm gonna use this one as I use this book in Whims 1. And it's just a really nice, nice piece. And it does have 25 pages. So when you're finished with this class, you have the whole book is completely full. So here we go. Let me just show you, let me walk you through it. I, I did a little description right underneath the book, but let me, let's just walk you through it. So the first thing you have is you have the cover. Then you have the first page. That is going to be the cover. And I just wanted you to do just a little, just a soft little wash. And I will, I will record one for you, but just a little background. And then you're going to just glue, you're gonna print out the logo and just glue it right on top of the cover page. Now, the, what you're going to do is you're going to, on the right hand side of the pages, you're going to just label in pencil where everything's going to end up. Each particular page is going to say whim, and then a number, and then a dash, and either the letter L for landscape or P for portrait. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna go whim one dash L all the way to whim 13, 14, 15. So whim number 15, dash L for landscape. Then we are going to do something different. We are going to turn our book vertically, okay? So remember, look at I can't even get the whole thing on, on camera. So this class is loose and fearless. So we're not using big giant pieces of paper, but actually when I open up my book, I've got 16 inches of vertical space. So that's where we're going to do a little bit of loosey-goosey, long, tall, just really stretching watercolor samples. That would be WIM 16-P for portrait. So we know that it's a vertical or a horizontal, but we know that it means a portrait orientation. So you're gonna go 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 all the way up to WIM 25. And if you have this particular book, you're gonna end up on the last page. So if you have the, the alpha, the red cover book, you'll have pages left over. If you have the moleskin book, you're gonna have pages left over. But again, I just love this, it doesn't matter. So please, if you don't have this one, don't panic, it's okay. So I like the beta series for the teaching and then I, can, I, I like taking this around when I see you in person. It's so dramatic and it's so fun and it's so full. Each lesson will be designated. We're gonna go right through the videos. So basically at the end, after the latter part of the class, we'll be doing some portrait. Portrait, not we're not painting portraits, we're just using, because I'm not good at that at all. <laughs> so we're going to just use the portrait orientation or the vertical orientation for the last, for 16 through 25. Just again, lightly in pencil, just just be very, very, very light in pencil. We'll write it in ink at a later time, but we'll also be using the entire page spread most of the time. Maybe sometime I'm gonna give you a lesson and then you actually do the art. And this should be your own little watercolor technique book. While you're learning these colorful ideas and just different projects, 25 different projects. Like I always run out of stuff to do, so but for me, it's a great challenge to come up with new things for you with new ideas and just these beautiful pages that you're really super proud of. So 
So again, you might have like a little lesson on one side and then do the art. We're going to do just so many things to teach you, but also to have this beautiful show and tell book. And I want you to just think about this for a moment. Are you painting for show or are you painting for your soul? And I think we're doing a little both. And what I mean by painting for show is that you're painting these beautiful landscapes and florals that go in art shows and get ribbons. And, you know, we're not really doing that. We're doing this more for our souls, more for just putting color down, having an activity that doesn't have to take all day. Everybody can be successful no matter what level you are. And, oh my gosh, those birds, there's my squirrel moment. Those birds are so noisy, but it sounds so good. I hope you don't mind. So I digress and I do that all the time. You know that. We paint to paint. We paint to just, just get that energy out in an artistic and a creative fashion. So let me go grab my paints and my practice sketchbook and we'll do a nice vertical wash. So sit tight, hang on. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to do this light, wispy, wonderful watercolor on the cover page of your sketchbook, whatever sketchbook you have. Remember, don't fret, whatever you have, make it work. So I, my goal really is to have you understanding and capturing different textures with water and watercolor paint so that you get these beautiful washes and you learn how to paint with watercolor and paint with water so that it doesn't look like you're using acrylic paint because you know acrylic paint you can layer it and layer it and layer it and it will always layer color but with watercolor when you choose a few different colors water is always going to change the color and the value of the actual background or whatever it is that you're painting. So if you wanted to get like a light green or a light turquoise, you're going to add white, but we're not adding white. I'm going to give you a whole, you're going to have a whole lesson on adding white watercolor and white gouache and make sure that you have some white watercolor, white gouache. So again, my goal is to make sure you really, really understand how to get these beautiful, wispy, light washes, creating different color value by just manipulating pigment to water. So I'm gonna use my practice sketchbook. And again, the practice sketchbook is something that I really want you to just be in all the time. I'm on, I think my 10th book now, because every single time I have an idea for you, I'm putting it in the, in the sketchbook. So before you try anything in your good book, make sure you can just try everything out in this sketchbook first, and then it will also be a great learning tool and you'll watch your own progress. So let me show you what I'm using. Today, I'm going to use my Schmincke paints in this in a metal palette some of you might have a black palette some of you have this set from whims one but what these are are these are full pans these little these little plastic little compartments here are called full pans it's a little plastic thing that removes and i've squeezed tube the shrinka tube paint in here and kind of refilled this palette I'll post the actual colors if you want to try Schmincke paints. I, I, I use Schmincke and I use Daniel Smith every single day. So it doesn't matter. Maybe you have Prima. Maybe you have Koi. Maybe you have Winsor Newton. I hope you have the best paints that you can afford because that's going to help you to get the, some of the results that I'm teaching you. Some of the lesser brands will have a lot of filler in them. They can make the paint cheaper, but of course your colors are not going to be as vibrant and, and translucent and transparent. Some of the better quality paints that use wonderful pigment and little fillers. This is just my little Schmincke set. It was easy to take outside, but again, I think I'm going to be filming a lot of this outside because it's just when you can paint outside in the summer it's wonderful and you know you've seen my snowstorms in January when I've had classes so I also have I have my Escoda brushes I have a number 12 and I have a number 10. Now, if you're in this second class, you might be ready to graduate to some better brushes. I know we're, we love the Simply Simmons, but these are Skoda. It's a synthetic brush, but it holds a little bit more water than the Simply Simmons. And they're still, they're not very expensive. And you invest in yourself, invest in your craft. 
And then I have two glasses of water. I have the little wee yogurt glass that I love with a little sticker on it. And if you're on my retreat, you got this. And then I have a little mason jar, jar of clean water, and a jar where I mix, mix up my dirty brush. So I'm going to set these paints off to the side a little bit. And remember, the first thing you're going to do with your paints, do not start painting until you have spritzed all of your colors to make them creamy. And that's so important because which, if you're putting a brush, if you're putting a brush into dry paint, you're going to ruin your brush. So make sure your paints are spritzed and I just give them a little, a little spritz all the time. Even when I'm working, I want to make sure the paint is is the consistency of like milk. The wet paint should be like milk. So here we are right in the sketchbook. Here's my water and let's scoot this over a bit so you can watch me mix my paints if we can get that in the shot. So here we go. All right, so I think you can see everything. So now I could use a 12, I can use a 10. Don't use anything smaller than a 10 to do this kind of a wash. And I'll just do the 12 so you can see it. So we're gonna work on a diagonal and I'm going to use the colors, the, my little turquoise. And if you want a really awesome turquoise color, the Schmincke Cobalt Turquoise is just to die for. So I'm gonna just push, just, just dab some of the paint off into my tray, rinse my brush. And now I have my clean. And I think I use just this sap green. So here's some sap green. And I pull, see how I just pull that paint right off my brush and let that puddle in the palette. And I think I also will use some yellow for my green. Okay, so there's just a nice puddle of green. And remember, we're just doing this diagonal wash. So I'm going to start with the blue. And then, you know what, I might even take another blue. So I'm just going to drag my brush right across the, the page and, a, and just cut that page right in diagonal. So pretend this is your sketchbook. So, and then I'm just going to just touch and I'm see how I'm lifting the brush, lifting the brush, rinse off, get some green, and I'm just going to touch that line and drag it down. And then I'm going to just touch it again with some, with a, with a puddle of paint and rinse off, get some fresh water on it. And I'm just, see how I'm painting with water, paint with water. Let's try another blue, just this other blue. Remember, we're just making a background for our first, for our first page, for our cover page, just so we have some, some paint, some paint work just appearing and getting us all excited on the very first page. So that color here I just used was the Helio Turquoise, another nice Schmincke color. Okay, so you hear airplanes, you hear birds, and I'm surprised you don't hear a lawnmower yet. But I love painting out here. I hope you guys don't mind that background noise. Probably you didn't until I said it. Okay, so you see how my, my water's getting really, really dirty. And I just keep going into the clean water and just kind of pulling that color that I've already put down on the paper. And I'm just very softly using the side of the brush. Okay, and just mixing that little turquoise but look at this color that i get so notice 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 that it is a, a it's a very light it's a very light touch and it's also a lot of water because i don't want the intensity of this let me show you how dark this is so there's the paint straight out of straight out of the tray okay that is like really super heavy value. If you took Whims in one, you know what I'm talking about. This is the butter. This is the heavy paint. And that Whims and watercolor one has some basic things that if you if you haven't taken that, it's it's nice to take that alongside with this one because there's just there's so much information. So the values that we want to be working with are more like milk and tea. So think about the consistency of milk and tea, which means your paint's going to be very very light. This is going to dry lighter also. And you see how the page is buckling? That's okay. I can also pick this up and let that paint pool a little bit, have a little bit of motion on its own. 
So that's also fun too. So now I'm just going to let that dry. Just what you'll do on your cover. So again, try a practice wash and then go into your book. It doesn't have to be perfect. And again, we're going to just print out that little that little label and you're just going to glue stick it in here that just tells you what class you're taking and again i apologize for yet another thing my little label maker but it's just like they look it looks so nice it looks so professional there's our launch you just get your book ready and get excited because we're going to move on to whims one and as we go all the different pages will be called whim one whim two whim three they're all whims they're whims and whims and whims it's painting on a whim so you're going to go outside you're going to go on your vacation on your terrace wherever you are you're just going to just have fun with your paint and just be loose and fearless with all your watercolors so let's move on to two <laughs> 